Okay, so picture this you're responsible for the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline, the whole thing. Your decisions impact millions of gallons of oil, hundreds of miles, lives, ecosystems, the works. How do you make sure your team's up to the task? Not just hope they got it right on their resume. That's what's so fascinating about this performance-based employee qualification certification system. Mm. It's all about proof. Anyone can say they've got the skills. Right, it's another thing to actually like prove it, especially when the stakes are that high. Exactly. And that's what we're diving into today, making sure those critical skills are a sure thing. It's about that next level of certainty, which I think we can all relate to in some way, in any job, really. Absolutely. Think about your own work. What are those skills where experience isn't just preferred, it's non-negotiable? Where messing up has serious consequences? That's what we're talking about today. And according to our source, Performance-Based Employee Qualification Certification Systems, it all comes down to nine key subsystems nine sounds like a lot it's not as overwhelming as it sounds they've got a diagram and everything to help break it down okay good because i need visuals <laughs> so we've got leadership subsystems core subsystems and support subsystems where do we even begin let's start with leadership that's always a good place to start right this is where we lay the foundation for the whole system okay so system governance system change control and communications. Let's break those down. System governance, that sounds pretty official. It's about making this qualification system part of the organization's DNA, making sure it's not just a checkbox, but actually tied to the big picture. Gotcha. So everyone's on the same page from day one. Exactly. You've got to make sure resources are there, people are on board, and the system actually has the power to make a difference. Otherwise, what's the point? And that's where system change control comes in. Things change technology, regulations, the whole nine yards. This system has to adapt. So it's not just about keeping up, it's about staying ahead of the curve. Right. Being able to change quickly can be a huge advantage. Okay, that's two down in the leadership category. What about communications? This one's pretty straightforward. You've got to communicate clearly and consistently. Everyone needs to understand why this system is in place, how it works. Because even the best system in the world is useless if nobody knows how to use it or why they should care. Exactly. Communication builds trust. It gets people on board. Without it, even the best ideas can fall apart. Communication is key, for sure. OK, so we've covered the leadership side of things, but how do employees actually get qualified using this system? What are those core subsystems all about? This is where the rubber meets the road, right? We're talking individual test planning, testing, and test results appeal all about making sure the qualification process is rigorous, fair, and accurate. Individual test planning. That sounds kind of personalized. That's the idea. It's about ditching that one-size-fits-all approach. Instead of generic tests, we figure out the specific mission-critical tasks of a job and tailor the process accordingly. So, like, instead of just knowing a software developer needs to code, you'd figure out exactly which languages and frameworks they'll be using day-to-day -day and test for those. Exactly. Let's say you're hiring a network engineer. Instead of a general networking knowledge test, this system would assess their ability to configure routers, troubleshoot connectivity issues, manage firewalls, the real-world skills that actually matter for that job. Okay, so it's granular. No more assuming someone who aced a general test is automatically going to excel in the specifics of the job. No. Got it. But what about the actual testing subsystem? What does that look like? It can't just be multiple choice quizzes, right? No way. Remember that whole show, don't tell thing we talked about. Testing in the system is all about performance. Think simulations, hands-on exercises, even scenario-based interviews. So for our network engineer, you might simulate a network outage and see how they handle it. Exactly. Or for a pilot, you wouldn't just test their knowledge of regulations. You put them in a flight simulator. It's about making the testing environment as real world as possible. That makes a lot of sense. But even with the best systems, there are bound to be times when an employee disagrees with their evaluation. What happens then? That's where the test results appeal comes in. Exactly. It ensures fairness. If an employee feels like they were assessed unfairly, there's a clear process for appeal. This might involve a review by a panel or a chance to provide more evidence. So there's a safety net. It's not just about being tough. It's about being fair. OK, so that covers the core subsystems. But we still haven't talked about those support subsystems, test development, assessor selection and training, and data management and reporting. What makes them so important? These are the backbone of the whole system. They might not be as glamorous, but they're crucial for making sure everything runs smoothly. All right, let's start with test development. 
What's different about the way tests are created in this system? It's all about aligning the assessments with what actually happens on the job. Not generic tests, but ones that measure an individual's ability to do the specific tasks of their role, using the actual tools and technologies they'll be working with. So again, it's about reflecting the reality of the job. Right. And that might mean working with people who are already experts in that field, analyzing what the job really entails. You've got to make sure the assessments are accurate. And once those tests are developed, you need qualified people to give them. That's where assessor selection and training comes in. Yes. And it's not just about finding people who know the subject. It's about finding people who can assess competence objectively, give good feedback. So it's a specialized skill set. Absolutely. Assessors need to be trained in how to observe, how to ask the right questions, how to give feedback that's helpful and objective. It's interesting how much emphasis this system puts on the human element of assessment, even with all the focus on being objective and standardized. Okay, last but not least, data management and reporting. This one sounds a little uh, dry. Maybe, but it's crucial. This is how we make sure the system is actually working. So tracking the data, making sure things are on track. Exactly. The data can reveal patterns, show us what's working and what's not. We can use it to make the system better over time. So it's about continuous improvement. Yeah. Using data to fine-tune the system, I like it. And that data can show leadership how effective the system is. It's not just about checking boxes, it's about results. Okay, we've covered a lot. We've got the leadership, the core, and the support subsystems. It's a comprehensive system, but I have to admit, it all sounds a bit theoretical. Do we have any real-world examples of this in action? Absolutely. Our source material talks about a really interesting case study, the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline. Now, that's a project with some serious stakes. Talk about pressure. Yeah. The Alaskan Pipeline, yeah, that's a good one. Thousands of miles, crazy terrain, environmental concerns, yeah, you got it all. So how did this performance-based system actually work on such a massive project? It's a perfect example of how scalable this system is. We're not just talking about a few technicians here. The pipeline project involved over 20 different types of jobs, each with their own specific skill set. Wow. Okay, so massive scale, high stakes. Where do you even begin with something like that? Planning. That's key. They didn't try to do everything at once. They started small, focused on a few key roles, and then gradually expanded the system over time. Makes sense. You can't just like flip a switch on a project yeah. of that size. But I imagine getting everyone on board, getting them to buy into this new system, that must have been a challenge. It was. And that's another big takeaway from this case study, communication. They really emphasize why this system was important, what it would mean for the employees, what it would mean for the organization. So it's not just about telling people what to do, it's about bringing them along, making them part of the process. Exactly. They even had employees give feedback on the system, help make it better. That's smart, get everyone invested. But let's talk results. Did it work? Did this performance-based system actually deliver? The results speak for themselves. They saw a huge reduction in incidents, errors, which means they saved money, and more importantly, it was safer. That's what it's all about, right? Reducing risk, improving performance, creating a culture where everyone is striving to be better. And the pipeline project wasn't a one-off. This system has been used successfully in all sorts of industries. Healthcare, nuclear power, it works. It's amazing how something designed for such specific technical fields can be applied so broadly. It goes back to that idea of demonstrated competence. Mm. No matter what you do, being able to prove you could do the job well, safely, ethically, that's what matters. So true. Speaking of insights, I noticed our source material also has some great commentary from experts in this field. Anita Augustine, Mark Graham Brown, people like that. Did any of their perspectives stand out to you? They all talked about how practical this book is. Mm -hmm. It's not just theory, it's real world actionable advice. Yeah, Anita Augustine's comment about the project plan really resonated with me. You can't just wing it, you need a plan. Absolutely. Yeah. And Mark Graham Brown talked about how much he loved the case studies, especially the Alaskan Pipeline one. It's one thing to read about it, another to see it in action. Totally. Okay, so as we wrap up this deep dive, what are the key takeaways you hope our listeners walk away with? First, competence is key. Being able to actually prove your skills, that's essential. Second, this system provides a framework for doing that. It takes the guesswork out of it. And finally, even though it seems complex, it's actually very adaptable. You can use it in any field. I love that. It's about owning your expertise, showing your value, no matter what you do. And in a world where everyone claims to be an expert, that's more important than ever. It's not enough to say, trust me. You have to be able to show it. 
<laughs> well, that's our show for today. We've gone from pipelines and power plants to a framework for owning your expertise in any field. And remember, knowledge is power. So take these insights, try them out, see how they can work for you. That's it for today. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep diving deep. Thank you.